Hey, Ian, uh, let's run through the checklist real quick uh, for the listeners. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, uh, flip on your test audio. Are your levels between 0.5 and 0.7? Correct. If you don't talk, is the audio level completely flat? If I keep my hand on the right side of my computer. <laughs> That's ghetto. All right, test, test your audio. Listen back. Are you sure that the input is from your best quality microphone? Logitech USB. Correct. Good to go. Does your microphone have a pop guard or is it situated away from your mouth? No, and I have a deviated septum. <laughs> oh, gee, come on. <laughs> Finally, confirm your computer is not plugged in and is away from ungrounded outlets. Correct. All right. Let's start the podcast recording in five, four, three. Hey, podcast listener, even if you are alone in your entrepreneurial pursuit, know that today, right now in your earbuds, you are joined by thousands of entrepreneurs all around the globe seeking to do the same thing you are. If you want to know more about this program or this podcast or want to get barraged by a lot of annoying pop-ups, check out our website, lifestylebusinesspodcast.com. Yeah, buddy. Happy Thursday morning, everybody. This is the LBP, where we believe building a business is the best way to get more personal freedom and opportunity in your life. Speaking of opportunities, it's Captain Opportunity, the CEO, yeah, a man who's so good at accounting. If you ask him what tools he uses, he'll say, I use zero accounting systems. Sometimes I use less accounting. (laughs) A man so disconnected from the technology in his own business that if you ask him what his thesis on Genesis is, he'll think you're trying to start a religious debate. Or we're talking about Hyundais. (laughs) This is going to be a pun podcast. If you guys stick around to the end of the program, we're going to share with you how that cheesy intro segment will save us hours of our time in 2013. And I believe thousands of our dollars yeah i don't know about thousands come on i'm gonna i'm gonna show you how i believe it will uh but first ian this is the episode that's going to go out before christmas and uh you know we talk about all kinds of uh business and travel and making money kind of stuff on here but i think it's important that we recognize this holiday season on the program Yeah, buddy, it's time to talk about what is most important during the holiday season, like balancing your your end-of-the-year profits, your balance sheets, ensuring you've maximized pre-tax spending, getting a leg up on your competition while they're boozing at holiday parties, playing grab-ass during the Okay, 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 okay. Let's just just move on to the iTunes reviews. What do you think? Jesse Lawler says, run, don't walk. Subscribe to this podcast, five stars. I sincerely, sincerely considered an attempt to hack into iTunes to give this star a six or this show a six star review. Thank you, Jesse. And hey, I got a I got a story about Jesse. He just launched a podcast that is amazing. It's called Smart Drugs Smarts. SmartDrugSmarts.com. Uh, absolutely fantastic podcast. The the production is through the roof. And and for those of you who don't know, this is Jesse the Dominator. Jesse Lawler, the Dominator. That's right. That's right. The, the Dominator is, is rumored to have recorded these Smart Drugs podcasts while riding upon a stallion, delivering Christmas gifts to children in developing countries. <laughs> yeah. A man who supposedly laps people during drag races. <laughs> That's right. The FDA is in the final approval process of a Smart Drug based solely on his pheromones. So the, the, all jokes aside, the dominator is the man. Go check out smartdrugsmarts.com. And one more review, five stars um, from the great white north of Canada. Tim and Melissa say this, was, this podcast was so important to my continuing education. Well, we're going to do some continuing education today, Ian. But if you guys are interested in more podcast content, I've been making the rounds lately, Ian. I am not shy when someone wants to get on Skype with me and interview me for their show. I was recently on Jake Howard's show, on Dan Norris's show, and on Melbourne SEO Services show. So we will link see up to all that content if you're interested in hearing me talk about building tribes and talking about podcasting and audio content and a lot more goodies. Yeah, buddy. Uh, You need to learn how to keep your mic in the bag, huh? Keep letting that thing out. 
it's good to have it in there. And then when you when you meet somebody interesting, you just pull the mic out and you say, uh, let's monetize this relationship. Let's make it awkward. <laughs> I remember when I brought that mic over to Asia. It's like the size of a football. It's the Yeti, the Yeti blue mic. And I knew what was going to happen, of course. Um, you show up to Los Angeles International Airport. Sir. 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 What, sir, what, what, what sir, is this? You sir, know? please. Sir, please. <laughs> All right. Today in the meat and potatoes, we are going to talk about uh, if it makes you money, you shouldn't be doing it. Or the alternate title is SOP, Save Our Profits. Ian, I've been taking a deep dive into the education side or the intellectual side of systems making in businesses, but also in the implementation side. We've got a great laboratory on our hands. We've got 15 employees. And uh, we're actually, we've been doing this for years. Um, but we're sort of implementing processes for the first time in our second business, which is our publishing business. So I want to share um, a, a bunch of, of stories. And just as a background, um, two books that might be relevant for people interested in processes and the power that they have in your business. Sam Carpenter, Work the System. This episode will be based off of that book. And then also The E-Myth. So what is the realm of entrepreneurship? Well, it is seeing systems and processes. And you know what we're seeing with entrepreneurs, Ian, is that oftentimes great entrepreneurs are, are just naturally good at systems, even if they're not being explicit about it to themselves. Yeah, and uh, that's, that, that's what was kind of going on with us for the last couple months here is that uh, we just, we just kind of forgot about some of these systems, especially when we started building uh, this new company. We just hey, forgot, hey, we've been doing systems for the last four or five years. So now we're trying to uh, transfer some of these systems and build new systems for this uh, publishing company. Yeah, and you know, one of the things Sam Carpenter says in his book is, you'll be amazed that your competition, they're not doing this. So this is a great way to get a competitive leg up on your competition. Let me start with the story of this podcast checklist that we did before we launched into this. Because a lot of times, Ian, building out processes of your most obvious things uh, can have the most upside. Because a lot of times you won't create a process for your most obvious, most intuitive processes. Because you're like, that's so simple. We do it all the time. It's locked down. Well, um, these, these are the places that sometimes you have the most potential for upside. One little tweak could save you thousands. I'll give you an example, Ian. Last year, uh, because we had poor audio confirmation techniques, we probably threw away two or three podcasts. Oh, geez. When we first started podcasting, I remember we'd get through a whole episode, and uh, sometimes you'd call me and be like, dude, uh, we don't have a podcast anymore. And all we had to do was, was just a little testing at the beginning. So that's hours of our time, combined time. Combine that with the podcasts that have had poor audio quality um, and have turned away new listeners. So one of our best episodes of all time, I think, um, is called Five Reasons You Might Be a Loser. And I don't know if you remember, Ian, but my audio was so awful on that episode. It was because I was using the wrong mic and I didn't do a double check before I started. So now that we have this process, um, we've identified these things that are creating a successful podcast, we're systematizing them, and we're less likely to be subject to our momentary lack of good judgment. Here's the thing, Ian, about systems. Whether or not you've articulated them, they are the key points to value delivery and leverage in your business. So if you're not making them explicit to you and to others, you are leaving it on the table. And here's a cool example of how powerful systems are, Ian. Pilots rely and live their lives based on systems. And part of the reason they do that is because the stakes are phenomenally high. So, you know, pilots are the prototypical example of systems users. And I think when we relate that story to our small businesses, the stakes are up to us, you know? The stakes are incredibly high if we wanna change our lives and travel the world and become wealthy and all these kinds of things. And so, you know, if you look at the people who, for whom the stakes are very high, um, they've got the systems in place. Now, the question we need to ask ourselves is, how high are we going to allow the stakes to be for us? Yeah, I think uh, in part of my life, I've, I've, I've felt like systems are boring. That's why I've kind of avoided them in the past. I'd be like, oh, well, it looks so boring the way that they're doing the protocol. Check this, check that, check this, check that. Well, the truth is like 
and I've said this a lot of times, like as an entrepreneur, you should do what only an entrepreneur can do in your business. And it's like, that's figure out where the value is to be had and, and, and seek after it and, and try and mine that value. So that's exactly it. You know, set up systems for, for your employees and for people around you and for definitely you too. But if you find yourself bored in the middle of a system, I don't think you should be executing on that system anymore. Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's why we titled the episode, If It Makes You Money, You Shouldn't Be Doing It. Because if it makes you money, there is a clear path from what you're doing to money coming into the door. And you just haven't made it explicit yet if you're still doing it. So once you make it explicit, then you always have that in your back pocket to have somebody else do that. And I'm actually going to tell some real stories of like what we did in our business. But first, I want to walk people through how they can implement this in their business like today. You can sit down with this podcast and implement it. And by the way, this makes sense even if you're a solopreneur. And actually, maybe this, you know, this is the biggest upside for you if you're a solopreneur. This is how you can rocket fuel your business because you need to get people involved in your business ASAP. And the way to do that is to have clear processes. Because again, you're hiring people to execute the processes that deliver value and money to your customers. You're not hiring them to help, you know, generically free up your time or whatever. That's yeah, anytime we've to failed at, at, a, at a hire in a, you know, managing somebody's position, it's usually like with a creative task, right? So it's like, I want you to grow this business 10 times over. It's like, well, that's the entrepreneur's job. If you have a even uh, marginally confused vision of what's going to happen with your employee, imagine what your employee is going to feel like. You know, I've even had employees tell me this like to my face, like, you know, dude, what do you expect from me? You don't even know what you're doing. How am I supposed to know? You know, I'm, I'm barely, you know, I'm just learning your company. I've never learned mind reading skills. So I'm completely baffled at what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with um, the very first step, Ian. You are going to create a Google document. And of course, you can use different technology, but this is the simplest way to get started. Create a do Google document on your browser taskbar called SOD and share it with all your employees. Strategic operating document. Make sure uh, you don't have a uh, similar tab next to it called Amy, your girlfriend. That would be embarrassing. Next topic. All right, so the SOD's main um, piece of content at the very top is gonna be called your strategic objective. Okay, so your strategic objective is gonna be like your declaration of independence. It's going to de declare precisely what your business, even if you're a solopreneur or freelancer, what your business aims to do in the world and how it aims to do it. And this is, this is gonna be tied up like your mission statement, Ian. Yeah, so for all of our companies, we have different mission statements. Exactly. And that's a pretty simple thing to do. I think you just want to be granular. You want to be clear about what you're going to do. So that's strategic objective. Okay, your next step, right below that, and this is where it starts to get interesting, you're going to create general operating principles for your company. And this is going to be like your bill of rights. Okay, so if we're going to stick with the uh, uh, sort of government analogy, um, you want to have a list of rules that will empower you and your employees to create gray area decisions. So when things are tough, you can go to these general operating principles and get an idea of how someone in your organization should operate. And again, this is critical even if you don't have employees yet because you want to be articulating this stuff for yourself. And it's going to be extremely powerful. It's, it will pay dividends down the road. What kinds of decisions do you make? What kinds of decisions do you value and your customers value? Back in the day, like Southwest or somebody said like, well, do anything you want as long as it doesn't cost the company money. These are kind of the guidelines that you're going to put out there in this document. Yeah, you could say something like, you know, uh, help any customer do anything you can to make a customer happy as long as it doesn't cost more than $300 per instance. Or um, we always respond to customer inquiries within two hours during business hours. Uh, or we believe in a clean and orderly office, you know, like these kinds of things that help people to guide the culture of your company. And I would say uh, when aiming for general operating principles, look for between five and 30 rules that are going to sort of set the tone and, and help empower people to make gray area decisions. All right, next, let's get into the meat and potatoes, the real meat and potatoes. These are your processes. And these are like, to stick with the analogy, these are like the laws in your business. And even while I'm going over this, Ian, I feel like it's 
it's cheesy. <laughs> you know, I feel a little bit pedantic, but I hope some anecdotes after this are going to show you the true power of this. Um, okay, so I think what we do in this this SOD, the strategic operating document, is we've got a bullet pointed list of processes. Okay, and we decide on processes by anything that's a value delivery mechanism, any action, set of actions that leads to delivering value to our customers, we are creating processes for, okay? There's two different kinds of processes. You're going to create sequential, it's like one to 10. And by the way, this podcast, Ian, do you want to guess how many steps this podcast is sequentially? Uh, eight. Eight? No, it's over 50. Wow. Yeah, it's well over 50 actually. Um, I didn't even count because they're not numbered because it's a bullet pointed list. It's it's well over 50 steps to get this podcast published. And it, like the first step is super granular. It's like take the file from Dropbox and put it onto your desktop. You know, and that's really how you walk through. And here's the cool thing about that is when I listen back to a podcast for quality control and I say, oh, we shouldn't do this. I write an email to our editor and say, update the SOP. And it's this, it changes the whole dynamic, right? Because we've got 60 bulleted items. So this new piece of feedback becomes bulleted item number 57. The chances of that mistake ever happening again become dramatically reduced. And the quality of my relationship with my employee shoots through the roof, right? Because rather than criticizing my employee's work, we are building a better business together by improving our process. And it wasn't the employee that messed up. It was a faulty process that created the bad podcast. All right. I want to step back here for just a second because I think we're getting pretty heavy. So okay. one of the things that I want to talk about just real quick here, just back this bus up for a second, is the fact <laughs> uh, you know, that we're putting these processes in place means that we have a repeatable process. Um, and we've got some facets of our business that aren't repeatable. So take, for example, the portable bar company. We're doing a lot of different things over at the portable bar company right now um, because we're not sure what's going to catch on. So we're taking strange customer requests. We're making weird products. There's a lot of things that don't fit in a process. Uh, we do have a mission statement over there, but we don't necessarily have bulleted process points out. Well, and here's the cool thing is that you're standing on the shoulders of giants of past intelligence because you do, because we have a customer service process. We have an invoicing process. We have a warehousing process. You know what I mean? Like all these processes that we developed in other companies, you're standing on all that in the new company. And then you guys are running these marketing experiments, right? And the ones that work out are going to become these new processes. So now it's like, it's like, yo dog, I heard you like processes. How about some processes for your processes? Uh, exactly. Here's where, here's where it gets baller is that you make processes for how to make processes in your business. So now all of a sudden you've got all these employees that are empowered to say, all of a sudden, let's say Taylor is working on PBC blog marketing. He stumbles onto something that works. The moment he does that, he's like, boom, I'm gonna turn this into a process. Now, I might not need to reference that process every single time, but the moment I get busy and wanna hire somebody for this, boom, I can just email them that process and it's gonna to continue to get executed without a beat. And that's another important thing I want to mention. These processes need to be off the street, written for people of reasonable intelligence that could be taken off the street and walk through your process. So everybody could walk through our podcast quality process and get a high quality sound from their microphone. That's the idea. And Ian, this all boils down to this main point, which is employees hate guesswork. Reserve your willpower for where it counts. If you've already figured out, don't train that glucose, you know, making good judgments every time. Yeah, waste your creative energy trying to decide whether you're going to wear Toms or Converse in the morning. <laughs> and the punchline here, Ian, is that that's what working the system really is. Working the system isn't me and my podcast editor having a, like a, a fruitful conversation about the future of the podcast. No, working the system is me saying, hey, Part of our process is messed up because we made this mistake. Let's update it. And now all of a sudden, that's that's signed, sealed, and delivered, man. Play some Stevie Wonder. Sealed, like th this is, uh, you know, it's done. I don't need to think about that anymore. It's this collective DNA and intelligence that we all build together. And that's what I love about it. Let me tell you guys, let's talk about a couple stories, Ian. Why don't we just tell a few quick stories about how this worked. I wrote this delight, uh, two delightful emails last week after having become Dilbert. If you do say so yourself. 
if I do say so myself, after becoming Dilbert and getting super serious and earnest on this process stuff, you know, and I read a bunch of books about it and I made all these processes, I wrote an email to you and Alyssa about um, a, a hire that I want to make. And I said, do you guys think it's about time to hire somebody for X amount of dollars for SOP number one, two, and three? And I listed, I just linked to these SOPs. Now imagine how this changes the whole conversation in your business. And the implications of this are really cool too because if I were to say, okay, let's pull the trigger on it, any one of us could pull the trigger on that task because we know exactly who we're looking for. We're looking for somebody to do SOP one, two, and three. Everything else on top of that's gravy. And so this changes the whole nature uh, of, of, of strategic decisions in your business especially because you can actually figure out the real cost of executing SOP 1, 2, and 3. Absolutely. Right? Another example in our business, we've got a standard operating procedure for reeling in our accounts receivable. Uh, and it turns out that we just don't have enough time uh, in the day for everybody in the office to, to kind of pound on these delinquent customers the way that we like to. So we can go to Craigslist and for $10 an hour, we can hire somebody to come into our office for eight hours a week um, and follow this standard operating procedure. Uh, call customers, treat them the way that we treat our customers, and reel in that AR. Yeah, you know, and it's like we used to have this dogma, you know, just like get these really smart people and like let them make good judgments all the time as well. Again, if their good judgments aren't building processes in your business, you're leaving it on the table. I, I even do this myself. Like this, uh, I had this task, Ian, where I was paying one of our Filipino developers every month because it was like this legacy thing that I didn't revisit and I was too lazy to sit down and write down what I was doing. So every month, me, the owner of the business, actually was making wire transfers. It was ridiculous. And finally, I just I called myself out this week and I sat down and I wrote you a seven step process for how it gets done. And then I, I sent it to you and I said, this is like officially off, my, off of my scope of responsibilities. And, and the cool thing about that is I spent the same half an hour, except I'll never have to do it again. Okay, it's repeatable if we were to hire another person uh, in the Philippines. And um, not only do, do I not have to do it, but you don't have to do it because I wrote it for people off the street. So now you can just take that process and plug it into whoever's doing our accounting or whoever our bookkeeper is or anything like that. So it's just a simple thing, but uh, it's extremely powerful. That's all. Yeah, Sam Carpenter was on uh, Mixergy. Uh, talking about his uh, book and uh, he told a story about going camping or something like that and uh, everybody there had all these uh, emails and phone calls that they had to tend to when they got back they were joking oh I got 150 emails when I get back and Sam uh, on his way back his like CFO called him and just said hey have a nice trip back or whatever and uh, his point was uh, you know he's got people and systems in place and that's why uh, he is allotted the freedom uh, to do what he wanted to do, which was go cycling. So, you know, his point wasn't, you know, with these systems, now you can go on vacation, but that kind of is the point. If you've got systems in place, you know, you don't actually have to be in real time with them. Here's the thing. A lot of successful entrepreneurs, and I think me and you are examples of this, are in part successful because we're intuitively good at this. And uh, like me and you are very good at not working in our businesses. Like that's never been a big problem for us. Anybody that feels like they're sort of a natural, you're not. Like if you write down this stuff, you will supercharge that already instinctive quality in you and take it to an entirely new level. So that's the idea here is that these are the things that are at play for successful entrepreneurs, even if they're not explicit. So when you make them explicit, the power that that's going to give you and the asset that that's going to build in your business is going to be incredible. So I'm excited to hear your stories. Here's how you can get started if you're interested in starting processes. You can read Work the System or you can go check out Sam Carpenter on uh, Mixergy. All right, Ian. So four really quick steps to getting started here. Open up that strategic operating document in Google Docs and link to it on your toolbar. Okay. Then write your declaration of independence working in your business. Now you're going to work on your business. You're going to write a strategic objective. Even if you're a solopreneur, you're going to write your general operating principles and you're going to start mining your businesses for processes that deliver value to your customers. And you're going to work on that document as an active 
live document continually. You're going to go to that document every single day to make tweaks and updates and to build out the value process in your business. And that's it. Sound goody? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get moving on to just the tips. Man, we love this stuff. If you're geeking out on processes, come to episode 134. Let us know how you're doing it. If you want to swap notes with me, this is a process that these are things that I'm rolling out in my business today. I'm happy to swap notes with you, share advice and ideas. I hope you know you get as pumped about it as me. I had like an entrepreneurial orgasm when I sent that email to you and Alyssa. And I know you guys, for you guys, it's just a normal email. But for me, it, it felt so empowering to say, hey, do you want to hire somebody for X amount of money for these three processes that are, it's like as clear as day. If that employee comes to our company, they're going to know exactly what to do. We're going to know exactly what to pay them. And then all that creative je ne sais quoi kind of stuff is friggin' gravy. And I'm looking yeah, for Yeah, buddy. Yeah, it's like looking at your dashboard, looking at your business dashboard and being able to make a decision based on the data. Booyah. All right, what's the tip this week, buddy? So I want to do something fun this week for the tip. I want to do a little live read here. One of my favorite drinks in the world. Dan, do you find yourself sometimes tired and out of energy during the day? Oh, sure. Do you find yourself feeling the shakes after drinking several cups of coffee in the morning? I'm shaking right now, buddy. Are your teeth rotting from all that Diet Coke you're drinking? Of course. (laughs) Me too. And that's why I don't mess with this stuff anymore. Those of you that know me know I gave up coffee and soda years ago. But you're asking yourself, Ian, you kind of strike me as the kind of guy that has an addictive personality. I've seen you at a party or two before. I know you must be hiding your vice. Yes, you're right, I am. And it's called Herba Mate, that sweet, sweet nectar of South America. And I only drink the best Herba Mate known to man, Goyaki. It's kosher for God's sake. Oy vey. Did I mention fair trade, USDA organic? You betcha. These guys are legit. Let me keep this simple. I'm not a representative for a Goyaki. I don't even know how to say Goyaki. Nobody's paying me to say this stuff. Goyaki doesn't know that I'm pitching their product on our podcast. I'm doing it because it works. My productivity is through the roof, modafinil style at a fraction of the price. Yes, I lost longer at the office. Yes, it's delicious. Yes, it comes in different flavors. And yes, in its raw form, it kind of looks like marijuana. Vitality, (laughs) clarity, well-being. Do yourself a favor. Grab yourself a bottle of Goyaki. Your business will thank you. Oh, and I don't have a discount code for Goyaki because the best products never go on sale. But head over to <laughs> at Goyaki on Twitter. Let them know you heard about them on the LBP, and maybe they won't sue us for tarnishing their image. This is such a cheap ploy. You are a closet copywriter. That is a fan- If we were to have uh, advertisements on this on this show, I hope they'd be like that. I'll write an SFP. All right, guys. Wait, I'm going to play you out this week with some productivity jams. Pretty light somethings wrong this is one of those songs that doesn't really resolve itself it keeps you keeps you pumping keeps you working and that's what we need to do Ian, because we've been having way too much fun this thursday morning hope you guys have a great weekend getting started with those sod's oh yeah strategic operating documents my strategy will be to see you next thursday morning Ian. booyah Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Don't be shy. We've got a mailing list, lifestylebusinesspodcast.com. Go there, get yourself signed up, and we'll keep you up to date on everything.